Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us again for the fourth edition of GoSeek webinars. My name is Venkat. I head partnerships and I will be your host for this afternoon. Today we are uh, joined by Mr. Venkateshwar and Muthu Krishnan, uh, certified financial planner and uh, founder of Acuel Advisor, a wealth management and advisory firm based out of Chennai. Mr. Venkateshwaran is a veteran in the financial profession, having spent years working with some top tier institutions around the world. Uh, previously, before branching out on his own, he served as the VP for ISG operations in Morgan Stanley. And uh, he is today joining us uh, for giving us some basics on uh, investment planning and financial planning for uh, startup entrepreneurs and startup employees. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you here on GoSeek, sir. And uh, I, along with everybody else, am uh, super thrilled to uh, listen to what you have in store for us. Uh, so we can get started. We have 25 people almost. Uh, let's get going. Very good. Uh, good afternoon, uh, friends. Good afternoon, uh, all the participants in uh, for this webinar. Um, thank you very much for logging in today on a Saturday afternoon. Of course, we are all cooped in in our houses, but still uh, managing to log in on a Saturday afternoon. Thank you so much. And special thanks to uh, Venkat Raghavan for uh, inviting me and hosting me on this platform today. We, we are going through unprecedented times, to put it very mildly. Uh, maybe even 45 days ago, we would not have even imagined ourselves like this in a situation where uh, we are all uh, locked down. Um, this is a very, very uh, unexpected event, but that is how the world goes on for centuries uh, and uh, uh, millions of years. So we, are, we, are, we will always get surprised with what is happening around us. So it is very important that um, we are financially well prepared to uh, out and ride through these kind of tough situations. Right, uh, that will that is the objective of this session, and I am here uh, going to talk to you about um, some of the uh, things what you can do so that you are able to build a very robust financial life, uh, which can help you sail through tough times. Right, that is the objective of this session, and of course, as an add-on, uh, we will also talk about wealth creation. What is wealth creation? How wealth creation um, through equities happen? Because that was one of the topics which uh, uh, Venkat Raghavan wanted me to uh, quickly touch upon. So it will be uh, my pleasure to talk to you today. And uh, I hope you will find this session useful as we go along. So I will go ahead and uh, share the presentation what I have made for the day today. Um, Absolutely, sir. Sir, I will just quickly walk uh, walk through the participants uh, of the format of the webinar, right? So as and when you guys have questions, please make sure you post it on the chat. I will be moderating the questions and consolidating them to uh, present to Mr. Venkat uh, during the question and answer session. Uh, once the presentation is over, you will uh, you will get the opportunity to directly come up to you and uh, interact with the speaker. Uh, so before that, if any of any questions you have, just post it on the on the chat, and uh, I will be uh, moderating them. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Venkat. So we are going to talk about how we can smartly plan our finances and be prepared to ride out these uh, very, very difficult times. Now, we will go through this. I will quickly take you through the contents, what we are planning to take a uh, cover during this um, in our presentation. We will start with introducing the concept of financial well-being. Right. So that is the first element which we will talk about. Then we will proceed and uh, I will uh, take you through the four must know concepts with regard to personal finance. And I will also give you an eight point action plan, which is all weather proof. Right. It is not only recession proof, it is all weather proof, which will help you to sail through difficult times as well as good times. And we will also talk about equity investing and uh, what what are the probably the few frequently asked questions with regard to equity investing okay so we will proceed further so i want to introduce the concept of financial well-being what is financial well-being financial well-being is being in a state of having supreme confidence about 
your financial wellness right you are very confident that your financial resources are being productively used and uh, you are confident that you will be able to meet all your financial goals of the in the future and you will also be able to observe any financial shocks right now what we are going through is a financial shock which nobody would have predicted maybe probably even 45 50 days ago right so this is a shock how do we overcome this so your financial well being is a state where if you are able to confidently tell okay i am sure that my finances are properly managed i am sure that i will manage my future goals and i will also be able to observe any financial shocks then you are in a state of financial well being right what is the advantage of being in a state of financial well being it gives you a feeling of peace right and it also gives you a sense of satisfaction of having achieved this as part of your day to day life right so that is what is financial well being is all about so financial well being is also closely interrelated to wealth creation so wealth creation is something which emanates or which germinates through financial well being you cannot disassociate financial well being and wealth creation i i want to be wealthy but i don't want to be financially i don't want to be financially prudent it cannot happen so both of this both of these terms are interrelated and it is very closely uh, correlated to each other okay so the four must know concepts in personal finance this is the first element which i want to talk before we jump into the eight eight step process to achieve financial well being or even talk about financial uh, wealth creation before anything you should know about these concepts because these concepts can help you to take very very prudent financial decisions as we go along in your lives we we are all uh, at all points in time we have to take various decisions right so when we take those decisions and if you are able to understand these concepts very clearly it will help you to make appropriate decisions so the first element or the concept which you should know is power of compounding this is not rocket science and we have all read about this studied in our middle school probably and uh, we are all very comfortable um, when we when we studied that maybe few years or few decades ago what is power of compounding power of compounding is nothing but you are investing for a particular goal and you are investing in a particular asset and you earn some return out of that if you don't draw that in in return or interest out of it but continue to remain invested for a longer period of time then the next year interest will you will earn not only on the principal but also on the interest compound basically it is something like a snowball imagine a snowball which is being rolled from the hill top right as it reaches the bottom you can imagine the size it would uh, it would become right that is what power of compounding is all about and it is one of the most important concepts in personal finance if you understand power of compounding i think 70% of your personal financial uh, queries or uh, doubts will be clear always remember power of compounding is back ended the power of the, you don't see the impact of power of compounding in the initial years of your investment the power of compounding is very very back ended and longer you stay invested the better the returns what you get right so i just want to showcase some examples say imagine yourself investing 1 rupee at a rate of 8% per annum right so there is a table which i have uh, got for you and uh, the the point what i want to ask you is say imagine you are getting a 8% return how much return you get between the 25th and the 30th year so of course the x the y axis is the years what you see so between 25th and 30th year you earn close to 3.21 rupees for every 1 rupee invested many many years ago you are not doing anything you are not putting in any additional capital but the original capital what you invested which is 1 generates 3.21 rupees for you 
between the years 25 and 30. Of course, between 20 and 25, it, it generates 2.19. So what I was trying to tell you, the longer you stay invested, the better the returns what you get. So, imagine, so always remember, in investing, we all chase for the highest returns. Okay, can I get another half a percent more? Can I get another 1% more here? No, it doesn't matter. What really matters is the longer the time frame. If you can give longer time frames, you will make enough and more returns to meet all your needs. Okay, so this is the first element which we all should know. And we proceed to the second element, which is nothing but inflation. Inflation is really a monster which we all should be aware of and afraid of. So what does it mean? Inflation is basically the general increase in the prices of goods and services. Do we all come across inflation as a term whenever, uh, probably on a monthly basis, the government of India announces the monthly inflation for the last month was around 5%, 5.4% or something like that. So what it generally means for you and me? It means the purchasing power of our money continues to decrease because of inflation. Just for your information, friends, over the last 30 years in India, we have had an average inflation of 7%. That is, every year, you lose 7% of your money to inflation. Okay? So inflation is really eating or eroding your wealth. I will just quickly tell you how inflation impacts your livelihood or your life. Today, if you are spending 30 rupees, 30,000 rupees per month, I can tell you in 20 years, you will need almost 80,000 rupees to maintain your standard of living. Right? And if you just keep 1 lakh rupees under your pillow and sleep for 20 years, imagine yourself as a Rip Van Winkle for 20 years and you wake up after 20 years, you will find that 1 lakh's purchasing power has gone down to almost like 38,000 rupees. That is the power of inflation, right? So you don't believe me, right? I will give you an example of how inflation has impacted our lives. See, this is the price list of a hotel, a Udupi type of hotel in 1983. For people who can read Tamil, please go ahead and read Tamil. Uh, I will read out for the sake of others who can't read Tamil. The price of a coffee in 1983 was 75 paise. What is the price of a coffee today? In a Udupi hotel, I am not talking about a five-star hotel or anything. The price of a coffee in a Udupi hotel is anywhere between 25 and 30. And mind you, these are pre-COVID prices, right? So I don't know what would be the prices post-COVID, but this is the price. This is the price of inflation, what we have to pay. A 75 paise coffee has moved to something like 25, 30 rupees over a period of 37 years. The same thing applies to all other products which has been listed there. So inflation is a monster and we, we are all impacted by it, right? So the second important element, what you should remember with regard to personal finance is inflation. Remember, inflation erodes the purchasing power of your money or wealth. The third thing which you all should know is taxes, right? Today, taxes have the first charge on your income. It is not your spouse, friends. It is not your spouse. It is the taxes which has the first charge on your income. Your salaries gets credited into your bank account after deduction of TDS. Right? And you, whatever investments you make, you put it in a fixed deposit or you buy a real estate, whatever investments you make, you are subject to different kinds of taxes. As Benjamin Franklin, the founding father of America, once popularly said, only death and taxes are the two certain things in life. Nothing else, friends, nothing else. So you cannot ignore taxes when it comes to personal finance. Always remember that. The fourth element what we have to keep in mind is the real effective rate of return. So we, 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 we know we all keep fixed deposits in the bank. How much interest you get? Probably 6% today. Okay. Out of this 6%, do I need to pay any taxes? Yes, I have to pay 30%. So 30% of 6% is 1.8%. 
So 6% minus 1.8% is the net return what I get. 6 minus 1.8 is 4.2%. Does the story end there? No. After that, I have to factor in the inflation. When I factor in the inflation, what happens? My inflation, according to the government declared rate, is 5.5%. So the deposit, which gave me 6%, minus taxes, it came to 4.2%, minus inflation, becomes minus 1.3%. So actually, by investing in a fixed deposit, what is happening? Our real effective rate of return is not even positive, but it is negative. Always remember, real effective rate of return determines whether you are growing your capital or depleting your capital. Positive real effective rate of return always encourages us to save. But if you don't have positive real rate of return, then we are losing capital. So these are the four important concepts which I want to quickly take you through before we jump into the all-weather eight-point action plan to secure your financial future, right? So power of compounding, inflation, taxes, and real effective rate of return, right? Okay, fantastic. So we will move on to the eight-point, all-weather eight-point action plan for your financial well-being. So what are those eight points which can protect and secure your financial life? Let's quickly see that. The first point which I will tell you is not, not only me, even your father, your mother, your grandmother, everybody would have told you before. It is save before you spend. This is the first thing which you get told by your parents, by your grandmother, by your whoever close to you and whoever looks after your uh, well-being. Right? So save before you spend. That is the first element. The say, and like that, we have eight other elements. I will, rather than spending time here, I will quickly jump on to that particular thing and we will do that. So what is saving before spending? We all get salaries and when we get the salaries, we want to make sure that we take a particular portion and set it aside for our future needs, for investing towards our financial goals. So that is what we have to do. What is the thumb rule? How much saving should I do? Anywhere between 50 to 30% is highly recommended as the percentage of saving you have to do before you start spending. Warren Buffett, the one of the world's richest man, famously says, don't save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after savings. So the thumb rule to remember here is 15 to 30% of your income should get into savings. What kind of savings? We will see that. The second most important element is setting aside or parking aside an emergency funds. Who would have thought we will be in a lockdown, our cash flows will be severely impacted, our lives will turn in ways unimaginable. So these are emergencies. Like this, there are many other emergencies. A job loss, which has become very common these days. Medical emergencies for self and family. So these are emergencies for which we all need to set aside some money. Ideal requirement is to have at least six to six months of your expenses to one year of your expenses set aside as emergency funds. If you are able to set aside that, build an emergency corpus, you are, you are, you are completing the first step in your path towards financial security. It will help you to meet any, any event, any untoward event, whichever you come across in your financial life. Where you can save this money, you can put it in your bank deposit, you can keep it in the SB account, or you can put it in liquid funds. Remember, friends, to be prepared for any emergency is half the victory in your financial journey. You will definitely be very successful. The third element which you have to keep in mind and always very, very underappreciated is have proper insurance. What is insurance? Insurance is a protection. Insurance is a protection against any uncertain or unexpected event. What we are talking about is life insurance. Who requires life insurance? Everyone 
who has a dependent requires life insurance. How much life insurance you would require? At least 10 to 15 times of your annual income is required for you and your dependents. So the moment you have a financial dependent, you have to have a life insurance. What kind of life insurance you will buy? You will buy a term life insurance. What is term life insurance? It is very similar to a motor vehicle insurance. It is covers any risk event. It doesn't return you any money back at the end of the term. But in case of any untoward event, in case the insured person is no longer there, it provides a sizable chunk of money to the financial dependent, whoever has been nominated there. Yeah, at this moment, I want to burst three of the myths which are related to insurance. One, insurance is always considered as a tax saving investment. People look at insurance only from a tax saving angle. Please don't do that. Insurance is not for tax saving, brother. Friends, insurance is not for tax saving. The second element is many people combine insurance and investment. Insurance and investment need not be combined. It is neither insurance nor investment. So you have to ensure that you separate insurance from your investment needs. The third element is many people think nothing will happen to me. I will live till 80. I will live till 90. No, don't ever think like that, right? So everyone who has a financial dependent, be responsible and have a term insurance. That is what my third uh, recommendation in the checklist to achieve financial security. The fourth thing which I want to tell you is have a health insurance. Just like you buy a term life insurance, you also need to ensure that you have adequate health insurance. Health insurance gives you a lot of comfort against many of the events which cause a huge depletion in wealth. In India, it has been found out that more than 70% of the people lose all their wealth for treating some ailment for them or for any of their family members. So health insurance is the most important thing. And imagine you having not having health insurance is like exposing yourself to vagaries of either your employer's cover or probably your spouse cover or something like that. Everyone should have adequate health insurance on their own. Don't, don't depend on your employer cover for your health insurance. Because as we saw a little earlier, the jobs are becoming very fragile. People are losing jobs, right? Over the last one month in US, almost like probably 30 million people have lost their jobs. I'm not exaggerating these numbers. This is what the unemployment claims say. So when you lose your job, your, your health insurance benefits goes with that. So it is very important that you have adequate health insurance on your own account. Don't depend on your employer. And unfortunately, in India, the penetration of insurance is only 4% of the population. We have a huge, huge under penetrated market with regard to insurance. And insurance, I believe, will be a um, virgin area for probably decades to come in India. The fifth element which I want you to consider with regard to your financial security is to start looking at your retirement needs. I know this is a group of people uh, who are startup entrepreneurs or employees of those startups and most of you and probably you are all young in age and why does this man come and talk to you about retirement? Retirement is far, far away. That is the thought probably most of you would have. But unfortunately, friends, retirement is a thing which you should start thinking about on the first day you join your job or first day you became employed or self-employed or whatever it is, right? Why? Because as we all see, the working life is getting reduced. People don't work till 60 years today. Probably we are all work, going to work till 45, 50, 55 max, right? But the number of years we spend in our retirement is getting much longer. We have the life expectancy increasing at a much, much higher speed, right? At the time of independence, the life expectancy in the 
in India was around probably 34, 35. Today, the life expectancy in India is 68. And among the educated population of this country, which we are, most of us who are, who are participating in this conference, I can say, safely say, it is 75 and above. So you work from 25 to probably 45, 50, and you have another 30, 35 years of your life, right? You have to save in these 25 years of working life to, to provide for the next 30 years. The second one is we are in a country where we don't have any social security benefits. There is no government support at the age of 65. We are not like US or the European countries where you get some kind of social security from the government. We are all dependent on our own money. And the third, we are moving into nuclear families. You cannot expect your son to take care of your retirement or your daughter to take care of your retirement. They, I, we don't know where they are going to be, whether they are going to be in India, whether they are going to work abroad. So it is very, very difficult to imagine that your children will take care of your retirement. There is a famous saying which goes like this, your parents are not your emergency fund. And your children are not your retirement fund. Build your own, friends. Build your own. What is the way to build that? So I, I, I look at it this way. For every year you are working, what you have to do is you have to save a particular amount of money and invest it for the next 20 years or 25 years or 30 years. So that will take care of one year of saving. Whatever you are saving now will take care of one year of your retirement needs say after 20 years or 30 years. So that is what um, our retirement approach should be. The sixth element is always think about what are your future goals, financial goals, right? Don't wait for the things to happen and keep searching for goals. Keep searching for ways how to meet those goals, right? We all know we have life cycle goals like planning for our education, planning for our marriage, planning for our children's education, Probably you want to buy a car, you want to buy a house. See, you can't just like that one day wake up and say, okay, I will go and buy a car. You can't do that. You have to start saving systematically. You have to have measurable goals. That is what SMART is all about, right? Specific, measurable, attainable, and relevant goals, what we all should have so that you, and you start saving towards those goals. That is the most important thing. Once you start saving towards that goals, you make your future goal, future absolutely secure, right? So that is the sixth element which we are all looking at. And we move on to the seventh element. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, which we have been told many, many times in our lives. So as you see on this uh, scale of risk, there are different asset classes which can give you different types of returns, right? Money market or cash gives you the lowest return and it has the lowest risk. Equities has the highest return as well as the highest risk. So you have to mix and match and build a diversified portfolio to participate in the financial well-being or in creation of wealth. You cannot put everything in one asset class which I am, I am seeing as a financial advisor, when I look at my client portfolio, portfolios, a lot of people have either put all their money in real estate. They have two houses, three houses, and they have two, three plots, and they don't have anything else. Or I, I see people putting all their money in fixed deposit. Or there are some people who put all their money in equities. So don't concentrate, rather diversify. That is what my um, suggestion. The eighth and the final point is you need, you have built an asset base, you have different assets. It is very, very important. You have to make a sense of your existing investments. You should know what investments you have made for what purpose, whether your investments have proper nominations, whether you have shared all your financial details with any reliable family member or your friend. This is very, very important. And the most important thing is writing a will. I know you will again laugh at me if I tell you, you have to write a will. But in this age where relationships are very fickle and people, people go through a lot of divorces, uh, the partners keep changing and we have living relationships, it is very, very important you have a proper will which will address what asset has to go to whom. Right? So unless you write a will, 
you are exposing yourself to the vagaries of the Hindu succession law or the Muslim succession law or the Christians and to whichever community you belong to, right? Which makes it a little more messy affair after your lifetime. So it is very, very important that you write your will and leave it with uh, one of your uh, responsible and reliable person within the family or in your friend circle. So to summarize, what are the eight things by doing those things, you will achieve a financial, secure financial future, whatever may be, whether we are going through a recession or we are going through a boom time, whatever it may be. If you can do all these eight things, quickly I will recap, save before you spend, save 15 to 30% minimum, Park aside 6 to 12 months of your monthly expenses, including your EMIs in an emergency fund. Have adequate life insurance. Buy health insurance outside your employment. Don't rely on your employer. Start saving for your retirement. From the day you join employment, start saving for that. Invest for your future goals. Don't scratch money here and there to meet your, your goals. Diversify your investments across different asset classes and make sense of your investments. So these are the simple eight step plan which can give you a foolproof mechanism to secure your financial future, right? Do you think it is easy, difficult? It's easy only. Yeah. So uh, this is what I have with regard to uh, financial uh, plans and I will next move on to equity investing. Like a lot of people have shown some interest. I, we want to address, uh, address, uh, understand about what is equity investing is all about. Before I move into equity investing, I just want to uh, quote this from, um, uh, show you this quote. What is fear? Non-acceptance of uncertainty. If we accept that uncertainty, it becomes an adventure, Lord Buddha. So this is the quote with which I want to move into equity investing as an asset class. So we will see what is equity investing, how we can, how we can uh, uh, go about investing in equities, for what purpose we are doing all these things, right? So what is equity investing? Equity investing is buying part ownership in companies. So you people, most of you from the startup world, you will know about equity, right? Sweat equity, RSUs, those are the terms which you are all familiar with, right? You become a part owner in a company when you buy into equity. So what is equity gives you? Equity gives you in return dividends from the profits of the company. They also give you capital appreciation. If the company does well and the profits keep growing, the share prices keeps increasing. There are more demand in the market. A lot more people come and want to buy those stocks. So there is a capital appreciation which also comes. Remember, equity investing is a long-term process. Equity investing is not a buy today, sell tomorrow kind of an activity. Right? So when you build a startup, Right, you 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 germinate an idea. You do a proof of concept. Then you take it to a prospect. Then you do uh, some kind of um, soft launch. Then you go full full hog. Then you build a business. Then it takes a long time to generate profits. So, to uh, to accrue the benefits of equity investing, you have to give time. It cannot happen overnight. If you are buying some stocks for the purpose of making quick money over a period of two weeks, 10 days, three days, then you are not into equity investing. You are into gambling, my friends. You are into gambling. That is not equity investing, okay? So equity investing, always remember, is a long-term investment process. I just want to uh, talk to you about what is not equity investing. Lot of people with the advent of computer-based trading, mobile-based trading, uh, right, app-based trading. Lot of people buy and sell equity. They buy at 9:30 in the morning, try to sell it before 3:30 in the evening, and try to make some quick gains out of that. Is that equity investing? Lot of people say yes. I am an equity investor. They are not equity investor. They are day traders. 
lot of people buy stocks based on tips from their friends or relatives oh this is going to do well why can't you buy so they buy is that a equity investing no they are not again it is gambling if you are looking to buy today sell tomorrow buy on news sell on rumors whatever it is it is not equity investing and finally if you are buying and selling derivative contracts or options or those kind of things do you think those are equity investing no my friend no my friend they are not equity investing they are all speculation so there is a world of difference between equity investing and all these things so day trading is not equity investing buying stocks on tips and rumors is not equity investing if you are trying to make quick gains by buying today and selling tomorrow it is not equity investing if you are trading in derivatives like futures and options this is not equity investing okay so always remember equity investing is in the process you are building a business and participating by reaping the benefits of the of building a business over a period of time right that is what is equity investing is all about what is the purpose of equity investing right the key objective or the purpose of equity investing is to create wealth nothing more right because equity investing we all know comes with this attendant risks so there is element of risk which is always there in equity investing but what what is the purpose the purpose is to create wealth can we create wealth of course we have created wealth for the last so many years and we will continue to create wealth as long as the entrepreneurship and uh, uh, the people are willing to buy those equity things i think equity has been there from time immemorial for probably not less than 500 600 years right and it will continue to remain for the next foreseeable future so the purpose of equity investing is to create wealth and how it has done over the last many years so this is a chart which i have pulled out for the last 40 years from the time sensex was created in india if somebody has invested 100 rupees in sensex probably it is little dated because it is still showing like 40000 but today we are around 32000 even assuming it is 32000 i have given three asset classes what how it has moved over the last 40 years if we had invested in fixed deposit 100 rupees in fixed deposit 40 years 42 years ago in march 1979 today you will be sitting on 2500 rupees or thereabouts if we had invested 100 rupees in gold in 1979 today you would be sitting on 5690 rupees worth of gold right maybe a little a little more now that the price have increased you take it as 6500 and friends if you had invested the same 100 rupees in sensex in 1979 and today we are looking at 32000 rupees in your bank so which is which has produced wealth for you undoubtedly it is the equity investing which has produced wealth for you so uh, friends always remember equity has that inherent quality to make each one of us wealthy in the coming years so we have to be very very prudent in what we do how we invest and we can all be wealthy so that is the purpose i just want to cover some of the frequently asked questions with regard to equity investing so that uh, before we get into the q and a sessions i think most of the queries can get answered so the first frequently asked question uh, i kept i will i always face when i meet my clients or when i meet my prospects uh, is is it the right time to invest we are going through an economic situation which is all gloomy businesses are struggling we are in a lockdown situation friends understand one thing the world has never been peaceful for millions of years always the world is full of violence in physical or this financial terms right so there is you cannot expect a world to be in a very very um, uh, trans state but it will always be in some state of flex i have just reproduced the graph of what all major events which have happened in the last probably 27 28 years and whenever we have to go through these situations 
we would have felt the same anxiety the same insecurity as we go as we are going to a today thanks to covid 19 right so to answer the question is there a right time to invest in equities my answer is every time is a right time to invest in equities the only time or the only thing which is important is you should give a sufficient period of time as i mentioned little earlier equity investing is a long term investment process if you have a time frame of 5 to 10 years any time is a good time to invest in equities right so imagine in 2008 when the global financial crisis erupted and lehman crisis the lehman brothers went down we also go we have also gone through a similar situation many times in the past and we will go through that many times in the future as well we cannot run away from that from that uncertainty that is why when i told you when i started equity investing session i i i showed you the quote from lord buddha if you accept this uncertainty it will be an adventure but if you don't accept then fear will kill you so equity investing can be done at any point in time provided you have a side reasonably long period of time and always remember friends you make the best investments in a bear market you don't make the best investments when the markets are very bullish when the markets are bearish you invest and you reap the benefits when the markets are bullish right so that is the first frequently asked question i move on to as the second question which is as equity investment protected against inflation yes we talked about inflation we talked that inflation is 7% per annum for the last 30 days so whether my investment in equities would have protected my wealth from inflation you want to bet definitely it has protected against any inflation whatever we have come across right fds have grown your money 11 times in the last 40 years gold has grown your money probably 27 30 times in the last 40 years and mind you friends equities have grown it 189 times in the last 40 years and i can tell you this will continue and this is a great protection against inflation if you want to beat inflation there is no other asset class which can protect you against inflation nothing but equities you have to accept the volatility and uncertainty but over a long periods of time the uncertainty the volatility even south and you get a very very good return above the inflation rate whatever we have seen okay the next question is are there true real life examples of all these equity investing really making money are there real investors who have really made money i don't know about equity investing but still i can invest can i make money to answer all your queries i am just giving you some proof these are not recommendations for these funds but these are some of the funds which have survived for more than probably 20 25 30 years and produce the kind of return what i have returned there the cagr means um, for people who are not familiar with that it is the annualized compounded return over the last say from the inception day say take the case of aditya birla sun life equity fund it was launched in 1998 august and today after almost like 22 years you are sitting on a compounded return of 20.95% my friend 20.95% compounded return can you get it from any other asset class i bet you can't and it is a very liquid investment you can partially extinguish liquidate and take whatever money you require and you can leave the rest of the money there and it is very transparent it is very tax efficient it is no black money no white no cash none of these jugaad businesses are there right so equity investing i just want to give you these are the examples of a very very passive fund when you when somebody invests in a fund they don't have to do anything they have to just keep investing money there the fund manager will take care of the man you back to invest how to invest he will take care you don't have to do anything your responsibility lies in generating the money and investing it at appropriate 
times. That is what you have to do. And it is not only one fund. There are hundreds of funds which have survived for 20, 25 years and produce these kind of returns. I have just given you four, five funds for just for the sake of examples. But yes, power of compounding really works in equity investing and equity investing. These are real life examples of equity investing, creating wealth for many of the investors, hundreds and thousands of investors in India. I am not talking about global context. These are examples from India and it can make a difference in your financial life. Okay. The next important thing is, okay, I agree. Yes, we have to invest in equity. I am convinced. Yes, it will beat inflation. But is what... Can I time the entry and exit? Um, I will enter today, maybe tomorrow, Monday morning, the markets will fall down. I will exit, I will enter and probably I will take the money after say six months and again re-enter after two months. Do you have to time those entry and exit in a very, very granular manner? No. My answer is, is absolute no for all these things. Timing the market is a futile exercise. You don't have to time the market. What is more important is the, that amount of time you spend in invest being invested as i told you investing equity investing is a long term investment process more the number of years you are invested in in equities the more the returns what you get you don't have to time the entry and exit of all your investments so friends these are some of the important questions which i kept which, which i am being Regularly asked when I interact with prospects, when I interact with the, um, my clients. So I thought I will consolidate that and try to give you some perspective on equity investing. I tell you, we can all become wealthy, right? Provided we have only one important thing. What is that? That is our behavior. Our behavior determines the returns what we make out of our investments. The investments will make whatever returns it makes, right? If you take mutual funds as an investment or gold as an investment, whatever investment it makes, that is different. Whatever investment return you get is called as the investor return. There is a huge difference between the investment return and the investor return. Investment return is basically the return what the investment produces over a period of time. Say for example, I told you, I showed you these funds. These funds have made 20% CAGR, right? 20% annualized return over the last 22 years. But how many people were there for the last 22 years? Very, very few people. Maybe hundreds in all of India. So that is what is behavior. Unless you can manage your behavior, not perturbed by the market volatility, not perturbed by ups and downs in the market, your behavior will determine the investment return. The, the investments produce phenomenal amount of returns and in order to you achieving that return, you need a solid behavior. You should remain steadfast. You should not run away seeing panic in the market, right? That is part of the market that is inherent in equity investing and we cannot avoid it. So if you can manage your emotions, if you can manage your behavior, you will be a very successful equity investor. Friends, with this, I think I'm coming to the end of this presentation. If you need any help in planning your investments, we are always there. I am, uh, my, this is my contact number and this is my email ID. My website address is given below. We are always there to help you. And this is in total is the presentation what I wanted to make and uh, to give you a foolproof method of how to secure your financial lives, your financial future in a recessionary time. In, in today, it can be a recessionary time. Tomorrow, it will be a boom time. See, economy goes through ups and downs. We always follow, follow a recession with a big uh, boom. It is, it is a cyclical thing and Good times are always followed by bad times and bad times are always followed by good times. So we have to be prepared for good times to take advantage of that by investing in the right asset classes, right investments today to secure your financial future. So with this, probably I will uh, pause here 
and I'll try to take some of the questions and uh, try to answer to the best of my ability. Super. That was a wonderful presentation, Mr. Venkat. That was very, very insightful. And uh, I, I also got to learn about some things I uh, never knew before. Uh, I have been collecting some questions both on, on the public chat and uh, there, there are a lot of people who are also privately messaging me with the questions. So we've got uh, Amit Kaushik asking what would be an ideal percentage, uh, percentage breakout for uh, various investments starting from cash to equity? Um, it's a, it's a very, very, um, interesting question. Uh, I don't have a thumb rule for what percentage should be, um, in cash and how, how much percentage should be in equity. It varies from person to person, uh, because each person's situation demands a different asset allocation, right? Uh, so if Amit Kaushik, I assume he's a 30 year old man, um, with the long-term financial goals, say, which are probably 15, 20 years away, he can definitely go for something like a 70% 70, 70 equity allocation or probably 75% equity allocation. But if the same Amit is a 50-year-old person looking at retirement in the next 3, 4, 5 years, probably he has to scale it down to 25, 30, 40%. It also depends on the corpus, what he has. So it has various elements we have to consider. Um, unfortunately, I am not able to give you a thumb rule but the common rule which goes uh, which is very popular in the financial world is 100 minus h right uh, so if tomorrow uh, somebody asks me okay uh, if amit is 25 years he can definitely go up to 75 percent equity 100 minus his h can be his equity the rest of the money can be in cash or fixed deposit those kind of things thank you right right we, we also have uh, Ms. Sudha asking, uh, saying that this was this was a really great presentation and it was very useful for her. Uh, and she's also asking for, for professionals who, let's say, allocate a very small daily amount, like rupees 500, right? Uh, uh, is it a long-term uh, investment strategy, is it possible? Of course. Uh, tiny drops make a motion, right? Um, 500 rupees a day, I mean, makes 15,000 rupees a month. And if somebody can do it, they can, for the next say 20 years, they can probably withdraw something like 40,000 rupees for the rest of their lives as pension. This is a possibility. I'm not, uh, I'm assuming a probably a 10, 11% return for the next 10, 20, um, probably 20 years. And if, they, if somebody can invest 15,000 rupees a month, they can definitely withdraw 30,000 rupees as pension. Right. So it is, it is a possibility. We can definitely build enormous amount of wealth um, over long periods of time, even with small right. amount right. of capital. That is, that is uh, what I want to say. Superb. Uh, sir, I also have one one other personal question, right? And a lot of a lot of young professionals like myself uh, share the same question. Uh, some time ago, you, you would have observed the boom that happened with cryptocurrencies, right? And uh, and there is there is a lot of chatter, there's a lot of buzz going on uh, both online, but people with a financial background and a non-financial background, right? Uh, saying all kinds of things about crypto, uh, right? Uh, what is your opinion on crypto? And, and is is it is it an asset class that uh, that is something that uh, uh, we could we could trust our investments with? See, uh, I'm not that technically qualified to talk about uh, crypto as an asset class. But from whatever, from an economic standpoint and whatever I understand, crypto tries to undermine sovereign countries. Right? Uh, so it undermines the central banks of different countries. And it is definitely going to face a lot of headwinds. Uh, from all the countries. So if it tries to undermine US dollars, US is not going to sit tight on it and uh, allow that to flourish. You know, uh, Facebook wanted to launch Libra as a currency and you, uh, they have to take it back. It is not proceeding as expected, right? Because it undermines the sovereign's ability to print money and it undermines the political class and it has wide ramifications. So I don't think... Uh, crypto as an asset class is going to flourish in the next few years 
uh, it will be always be with a lot of headwinds and with a lot of volatility, extreme volatility. Um, I have been following Bitcoin over the last one year. And from whatever levels it has corrected, it corrected almost like 80-90% and it has recovered some bit now. A uh, lot of uh, other cryptos have uh, gone, a lot of exchanges have closed on the cryptos. Uh, it is a very uncertain thing and uh, uh, you can take maybe a 5% exposure more as a gamble rather than as a systemic, very uh, pr uh, productive investment. It is more, if I hit it, yes, I try to make a huge amount of return. But if it goes, okay, I don't uh, lose my shirt. So that is what you can do with cryptos today. I would not encourage anybody to put more than 5-10%. Not Even if the amounts are bigger, if your portfolio sizes are bigger, I would not even allow you to put more than 2-3%. Because absolute money, the loss of absolute money can be very, very uh, high. Venkat, over to you. Right, right. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Rupak. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yep. yeah, sir. We also have Mr. Tarun Srivatsan asking this question, right? What can small industry owners uh, do during these times of crisis uh, when their regular cash flows are affected? Like, for example, for an, in, uh, for an industry that is based on manufacturing and selling their products on a day-to-day -day basis, the past the past couple of months where where supply chains has been affected and there has been no sales at all, uh, cash flows are severely restricted. Uh, so, what would you advise to uh, uh, entrepreneurs who are in that kind of a situation right now? See, as we saw in that presentation, um, uh, we cannot go back in time and change anything. But definitely, what they can do going forward is build emergency corpus, right? Um, that is the most important thing to wade through these kind of difficult situations. Um, uh, this kind of uh, situation was unprecedented, was unexpected, and nobody was properly prepared. Uh, so you have to start building your emergency funds going forward. But what you can do now is that is what, uh, if you ask me, you have to let go of unnecessary expenditure expenditures if you have. If you have um, assets locked up in unproductive assets, Exit from those unproductive assets and try to create or generate cash for your business, right? Uh, talk to your bankers and see whether the limits can be extended. Government is also uh, working on those lines. They are uh, promising something like 20% additional limits uh, for uh, business people. Uh, we have to probably many of the businesses have to start again. It is unfortunate, but, uh, uh, but in this catastrophic event, um, we have to start again. But let's be prepared better if we have to face a similar situation in the future. So my suggestion is get out of all unproductive investments you have made earlier. If you can liquidate them, uh, don't worry about the, the notional losses now. What is important is you are managing your cash flows. So get your cash flows uh, through exi exiting some of the investments. Um, uh, dip into your uh, probably uh, your uh, emergency funds if you have already built something. Uh, go to your bankers, ask for some extension. Talk to your vendors, ask for a better uh, repayment cycle. Um, um, use your all your persuasion persuasion skills to get collections from your uh, buyers a uh, little earlier. You have to do a combination of many things uh, to wade through these difficult times. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Shishir asking a very intriguing question. Uh, he asks, what's your take on investing in uh, shares in outside of India, Some, especially in the software sector, in the software and the IT sector, some companies that we very closely track, even Indian companies, right, tend to uh, list their IPOs in, in NASDAQ or, or, or in, the, in the US, right? Uh, and and we te we tend up missing out on even uh, investing uh, on, on that kind of stocks. Uh, is it even possible for uh, people like regular laymen like myself to invest in uh, stocks outside of India? And what's your take on that? Of course, uh, it is possible. Thanks to technology today, um, uh, the boundaries or the borders are uh, getting uh, easily uh, dissolved. We can do cross-border investing. Uh, Indian government allows uh, remittance up to 250,000 US dollars per calendar year 
for investing abroad. Uh, so definitely, I think most of us will be able to uh, use this limit and invest. You can. There are different ways to invest outside India. You can uh, you can buy um, uh, direct stocks in global markets uh, if you know how to pick stocks and buy them, uh, or you can uh, you can buy any of the funds which invest uh, in global stocks. In India, there are many uh, funds which invest in global stocks. Uh, there are dedicated funds which invest 100% of the money in global stocks and there are some funds which invest up to 35% of the money in global stocks. So uh, you, can, you can definitely take exposure and it is the need of the hour today uh, that we have to uh, start investing outside India. But if you are a starter, if you are starting afresh and if your portfolio size is not very big, um, I would strongly urge you and encourage you to first start investing in Indian markets to experience equity investing as an asset class, then uh, start investing outside India because um, uh, that is what will help you uh, to uh, experience equity as an asset class. Then you can uh, go outside India. Uh, yes, but definitely uh, taking exposure outside India is very much possible as a layman, as a passive investor. We can all participate in global equities uh, in very good companies. You can invest in Facebook, you can invest in uh, Google, you can invest in Amazon, uh, LinkedIn's of the world. It is very much possible, either through funds or through direct stocks. But my suggestion is, uh, first, invest in India. Second, invest, even if you are investing outside India, first, go through funds. Unless you develop a skill and ability to uh, pick your own stocks, it is not uh, recommended to buy direct stocks. All right. All right. All right, everybody. With that, we are coming to the end of the session. Uh, I just wanted to, for, for those of you who do not know about GoFloaters, I just wanted to give you a very quick brief of what we do. GoFloaters is a platform for finding office and meeting spaces on demand. Uh, through our app, you are able to book office and meeting spaces either by the day, by the hour, or by the month. Uh, my name is Venkat. I head partnerships for GoFloaters and GoSeek is part of the community events that GoFloaters organizes to uh, support some of our customers and the startup community at large. Uh, uh, since, since the last couple of months uh, uh, from the lockdown, uh, uh, we have not been uh, operational uh, in, terms of, in terms of office space and what we have done is we have opened up our partner deals. Uh, which were previously exclusive to our customers only right so for those of you who have attended this webinar we will be sending out a discount link for hubspot crm it's a 90 percent discount link for hubspot crm uh, thank you for attending uh, it is a pleasure to meet you all today uh, what i will also be doing is i will also be taking a, a, a download of all the questions that you guys have asked and i will be forwarding that to uh, the speaker if he wants to uh, if you want to reach out to him personally you can reach out to him on the email id he has provided and we will also be connecting you with this LinkedIn profile on the follow-up mail that we will send you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. And uh, thank you, Mr. Venkat, for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure hosting you. My pleasure. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you for hosting us, uh, hosting me today. It was wonderful talking to um, a select set of people. Um, we had a, a very, very interactive uh, question and answer session as well. I hope the session was useful for all of them. And uh, please reach out to me if you need any help. Thank you for thank you again uh, for the patient listen. All right, sir. Thanks a lot. See you, everybody. Uh, guys, we will quickly take a photo. Photo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> photo up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, you guys. So all of you have spent your Saturday afternoon, and we'd like to thank you guys, as Venkat mentioned. You're on mute, Kaushik. Okay, I think uh, you are not able to get on mute. Uh, just give me a moment. Um, guys, if you can just um, pose for the group photo that we will be uploading on LinkedIn, that would be great. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, now, now we can hear you. Yeah, yes. yeah. This if is... you can, the first of you, those of you who want to uh, just uh, turn on your videos, Give your hands, we will tag you on LinkedIn and uh, we will send out a post. Exactly. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us again, you guys. So as I mentioned, this is going to go out on all the official social media handles. So wave, smile.
smiles all around ah amit's here aditya's here so anybody else who can turn your videos on please do so we have a full house here ah palni is here hello palni anybody else turn your videos on we're going to take the screenshot you guys all right no 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 one sec one sec <laughs> I I I thought I was taking it. You're gonna take it. Oh, huh? okay, okay. Oh, anyway, Rajesh has also turned his video on. All right, guys, wave, smile, one last time. Let's go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, brilliant, you guys. So also, I'm gonna be getting this picture out on LinkedIn. So we had a lot of learning from Venkat here. Thank you so much, sir. So the thing is, what was your biggest takeaway from today? So the thing is, there are a lot of people who are unfortunately not able to join us. So let all the others floaters know as well. Put out your top two takeaways from today on LinkedIn, and make sure you tag Go Floaters and ask the hashtag Go Seek Webinar, and we will make sure that there's a goodie coming knocking your door as soon as the lockdown is done. So Absolutely. make sure you guys do that. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everybody. All right, you guys. I will see you. Bye bye. I'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Bye.